We've seen how the uncertainty principle can be expressed in terms of variances over quantum wave functions. Now let's see how that works with the harmonic oscillator states. In particular, we're going to be interested in the uncertainty relationships that we can get from the ground state of the harmonic oscillator. Now this means that we're going to be interested in the variance of both the position and the momentum. And remember that that variance, for example in the case of the position, would be the uh, average value of x squared minus the average value of x quantity squared and similar for the momentum. So these are the sorts of things that we need to be able to calculate for this ground state wave function. Alright, so let's see what that looks like. Okay, for the case of the uh, the uh, expectation value of the position, um, we'll note that uh, when I put two factors of this ground state in the integrand, I'm going to get a factor of this normalization constant to the one-half instead of the one-fourth. I'll then have the integral from x e to the minus alpha squared x squared dx. And we'll note that this is an odd function and this is an even function, so we can immediately write down that this is going to end up being zero. All right, when I do the same for the expectation value of x squared, it's essentially the same integral, except I'm going to have x squared there in the integral, in the integrand. Right there. And I've written out, one can look this up in integral tables, but I've looked that up here and it's simply going to give us square root of pi, and let me write this uh, first factor out here. I'll simply get the square root of pi divided by 2 alpha cubed, which means that my overall result will be 1 over 2 alpha squared. All right, so this in turn, because the uh, expectation value of the momentum, I'm uh, sorry, of the position was zero, this means that the square of the variance in the position must be equal to 1 over 2 alpha squared. All right, so a fairly simple expression. Okay, we're going to do the same for the momentum. And the expectation value for the momentum, now I'm going to have a factor of a de derivative in the middle of the integrand. So I'll have alpha over the square root of pi integral e to the minus alpha squared x squared over 2. And now my, inter my differential dx of e to the minus alpha squared x squared over 2. And taking the derivative of this exponential isn't too difficult, so I'll just go ahead and write it out. Okay, I'll have e to the minus alpha squared x squared over 2 and a factor of minus i h bar. And the derivative is going to give me a factor here of minus alpha 2 alpha squared x over 2 or minus alpha squared x e to the minus alpha squared x squared over 2 dx. Okay, once again I've got a pair of even functions and I have an odd function in this integrand. So that tells me immediately that my expectation value for the momentum is just going to be zero for this harmonic oscillator. And that makes sense because the harmonic oscillator is a symmetric potential and it's just equally likely for the position for the momentum to be traveling in the positive direction as the negative direction. All right, what about p squared? Okay, well in this case I'm going to have alpha over the square root of pi minus infinity to infinity e to the minus alpha squared x squared over 2. And now I'll have minus h bar squared times the second derivative of the Gaussian. And if you uh, execute that second derivative, you can show that in essence what you'll get is the following. You'll have a factor of alpha squared, uh, sorry, alpha to the fourth x squared minus a factor of alpha squared, which is the, taking the derivative of this piece alone, e to the minus alpha squared x squared dx. So this is the integral that you would have to uh, compute. 
All right, so now when we put all this together, we'll have alpha to the fifth over the square root of pi. That's just alpha here times alpha to the fourth here. And then we got to multiply by the result of the integrand with x squared, so this integrand. So we'll get square root of pi over 2 alpha cubed. And then we're going to subtract alpha times alpha squared, or alpha cubed over the square root of pi, times the integrand of just the exponential, the Gaussian part, which is square root of pi over alpha. So the net result of this will be, and I forgot the minus sign here in the in, in the middle. So in fact, it'll be the negative of this. So I should change the signs on all of these things. So the net result will be this term will give me alpha cubed over alpha or alpha squared. And this term will give me alpha fifth over alpha cubed or alpha squared over two. So the net result of this is alpha squared over 2. Now I've also left out this factor of h bar squared. So let's go ahead and, for completeness, put it in there. So I'll have alpha squared, h bar squared over 2. And so once again, I can easily calculate my variance squared is going to simply be this because the position, uh, sorry, the momentum expectation value is zero. All right, so I have this for my momentum variance squared. I have this for my position variance squared. So sigma x squared, sigma p squared is going to be 1 over 2 alpha squared times alpha squared h bar squared over 2. So the alpha squareds cancel, and I end up with h bar squared over 4. Since these are the square variances, what I really need is the variance themselves. So my final result is going to be sigma p sigma x is equal to h bar over 2. And we'll notice that this, in fact, represents the lower bound of what the uncertainty principle tells us. The uncertainty principle basically says the variance of position and momentum must be greater than or equal to h bar over 2. So in effect, what has happened for the ground state of the harmonic oscillator is we have a state that displays minimum uncertainty. which we can verify directly by evaluating these expectation values.